Hey everybody, Mike here. This one might take a few minutes, bear with me. I'm gonna try to get through this as quick as possible. I feel like I've got a lot of good information for you here on this one. So I upgraded my home network a couple months ago. After tons and tons of research, I decided to go with the TP-Link Omada series line of product for my house. There's a few things you need to know. First and foremost, I'm not an expert on any of this. I know enough to get myself in trouble a lot of times, but by no means an expert. With that being said though, I am very good at learning and picking up on this stuff. So after research and trial and error and a little bit of frustration, I think I kind of got this figured out. I've had this system operating now for a couple months, for the most part, flawlessly. With that being said, I went with these three products here. This is the brains of my whole network right here, with the exception of a couple access points I added as I went as well for the wireless part. Before that, I was running this little TP-Link four port switch just to get a few hardwired connections in the house off of a Starlink router that I run, that's my ISP. I still use this, I switched this over from my network closet over to my garage, and that's just because I didn't have enough Cat5 lines to my shop, and this is able to give me what I need in the garage. I'm sorry, this is a five port switch. It's TL-SG105, it's a gigabit switch. You may or may not need that. That's a nice little unit to have, especially if you're trying to get more hardwired connections pushed out farther with and you've only got so many lines to work with. Now let's get back into the brains of the operation here. There's a million different ways to do this. I guarantee you're either way above my knowledge based on how this stuff is or you're like me and you're just getting started trying to figure out where the heck to start. With that being said, I picked up the OC200. This is the Omada controller. This is what monitors the whole network. This controls up to 100 devices. If you need more than 100 devices, they have an OC300 which controls up to, I believe, 500 devices. Most people are going to be in this 100 device range unless you're in like an enterprise level and you're, you're trying to wire a hotel or some kind of business that needs a lot of stuff to make it work and make it happen. So by the way, this is a control. This controller is PoE powered. It does not have anywhere on it a place to plug in a power port. So keep that in mind. You gotta have a PoE to be able to operate that. If you don't wanna go with a hardwire controller like I did, you can use a cloud-based controller as well. I don't know as much about that because that is, that's just something I just decided not to opt to, but that option is still available. The next piece you wanna look into is this ER605. This is version two. What makes this version two is it's got a USB port on it, whereas the version one did not have that. The VPN router is very handy because it's got, not only does it can it port manage, you can prior, prioritize which ports you want to have higher priority. It's got up to three different WAN ports, depending on how you program it, as well as you can use this USB port as a WAN port if you've got like a 3G, 4G connectivity that you wanna plug in as well. So this gives you redundancy. I'm not using that feature. It's extremely nice to be able to know I have that available to me if I ever need it. But right now I'm just plugged into port one coming off my Starlink router and that gets my internet service to the VPN router. If you had a redundant, you can use two, three or the USB. That gives you either these two LAN ports here to run out to your switch or it gives you four LAN ports should you need them. Now for current configuration for what I'm doing, I'm running Starlink into one, I'm running my switch into two, my first LAN port, and then three, I've got running straight to my Apple TV in the other room. And that is because I want it to have the most, pri I want it to have second most priority to the switch, but I also want it dedicated to the VPN router for my home network because I use that as a hub for HomeKit. The other ports here I, I have dead for now, so I've got room for expansion. So now that you know a little bit about these, this is the switch I went with. It's a 16 port switch. There's a million different switches on the market that you can look at and go with. So you may need to redo some research on this part to figure out where you need to be. It's always good to buy a little bit more than not enough and then wish and then kick yourself later wishing you bought more ports. For my current setup right now, I've got the first eight ports are PoE plus and those ports are capable of providing up to 30 watts per port or 120 watts total. It's pretty good and my two access points that I picked up are PoE powered so they're running off the switch via PoE I'm not using an injector for either of my access points you can use these ports for the PoE or you can just plug into them like normal like a normal gigabit port which is all these last eight are is just gigabit only they don't have the PoE built into them so this gives me some room for expansion if I decide I need to go with more PoE device powered devices such as another more access points or I can even plug in cameras as well on this, depending on how much I want to upgrade. I felt like 16 ports for now I've, is good enough for me. I've still got four ports left over currently. If I run out, I could always upgrade the switch or I could add on one of these little switches like this if I needed more ports. So these three boxes here in conjunction will come in these boxes like you see here when you get them. So I went ahead and rub those out so you can see what those look like. Once you get these three things in your closet ready to go, setup on these was, was a little daunting at first because I didn't know what I was doing. I was able to quickly learn. The biggest thing when it comes to this, when you download the TP-Link Omada app on your phone, you gotta be patient. It it takes a little while for this stuff to provision and adopt to your system. Every once in a while, and, I, and I, twice actually, when I was in the middle of setting this up, I had to go through and actually power down a unit and power it back up and let it reboot itself before it would adopt. So that part was a little on the frustrating side. However, once it was adopted, everything works has worked flawlessly since. I've not had any issues. As far as features that I haven't used, but I know it's available, I may consider doing this later on in the future. You can go through and set each of these up with their own dedicated IP, make them a static IP address. You can also go through and set up guest networks and you can dictate how much bandwidth you want to go to each port on your switch. So if you've got a scenario 
where you are running a business and you want a certain amount of bandwidth to go to your customers or your guests as they come and go, you can do that and then leave you know, the bulk of the bandwidth for what your daily tasks are as well. Or if you're in a home scenario and you've got kids that are constantly on YouTube or you got kids that are sucking up bandwidth or they're big gamers on Xbox, PlayStation, you name it. They could suck up a huge portion of your bandwidth, especially if you're not dealing with a gig connection. Uh, like I'm not, I'm not fiber to the home where I'm at. So my Starlink is anywhere from one to 200 down and maybe 10 to 50 up depending on the day. Some days I've got more than I need. Other days I'm, I'm stressing, especially if I've got kids on there at the same time as me. So you can go in and actually provision a separate network for kids, for Yes, however you want to set that up and that way they've got a dedicated 10 meg pipeline or whatever it is that you want them to have you could set that up that way within the switch and within the controllers here it appears to be pretty easy for the most part i just haven't gotten into that yet to see how that all works this is an enterprise level system which i'm using within my home i wanted to foolproof my system to a point where i didn't have to worry about upgrading pieces and parts as i go because i've outgrown them so quickly been extremely happy with this setup so far i think in most cases if you're watching this video if you decide to go with tp link you're at least want to pick up the hardware controller and the vpn router at bare minimum unless you decide you're gonna go with cloud based on your controller and then your switch will be based on what your current usage is now and how much you think you might be growing in the future i think 16 ports with the poe built in is a pretty modest switch to go with they've got them that are much larger they also go up quite a bit in price as well so i felt like this fit the bill for what i was wanting to do i feel like i put a pretty great system together it's worked flawlessly like i said i love the fact that i'm able to monitor this from the app at any point in time even when i'm not home anytime i have an issue where something goes down it'll notify me and let me know i've got a piece of equipment down as well hopefully you were able to bear with me this whole time that was a lot of information I threw at you all at once. Hopefully some of this information helps you out a little bit and may helps you make a decision for what it is you might need at your home or business. I think either way you go though, and what you, no matter what you decide, this system is gonna be a great system for you.